passenger when he's carrying. I think we might be compromised. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking on the entire Phantom Liberty DLC. So get yourself some snacks, something to drink, get cozy, and let's begin this deep dive into Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty. In this video, we're going to look at quite a few different subjects and topics. We're going to look at Songbird's Natron attack before she became Songbird. You know, the one that she used to hack Biotechnica. Anything I'd find on BBS gossip feeds. Hmm. Biotechnica in 63 or 4. Fermentation facility in Oregon. Off the grid hack. Sound familiar? No shit, that was you? Only the best reach that high. Talking Spider Murphy, Bart Moss. We'll look at why Mama and Brigitte of the Voodoo Boys and Slider parted ways. What's the true origin of Dogtown? What is the true meaning of Phantom Liberty? And a bunch of other topics. We're going to cover all of those in this video. Phantom Liberty takes place in the tax-free haven known as Dogtown. Now, keep in mind, I'm not telling anyone to pack their bags and move there because, well, I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying that if you live in Night City and feel like you're paying too much tax and you'd prefer a more light-touch approach from your elected officials, then Dogtown could be the place for you. Dogtown has an interesting history. It's still considered a combat zone by both Night City and the NUSA. This means that the NCPD can't protect and serve within the borders of Dogtown. I'm NCPD in pursuit of a suspect who just fled into Dogtown. And I give zero shits. Back up to the city line, pork chops. This zone's outside your beat. Come on, Sarah. No point, let's roll. Fuck! She's getting away. It's Dogtown. Let her go. Listen to your partner. Talking a lot of sense. You know what? Fuck your zone. Fuck your, your... Our hands are tied. Don't let it get to you. Come on. Throw sips on me. As you approach Dogtown for the first time in 277, you can see that it's walled off completely. The only official ways in and out of the area are heavily guarded. Its main entrance is located north of the EBM Petrochem Stadium in Coast View. Instead of the NCPD, the law in Dogtown is maintained by the bar guest. Originally a part of Militech, Barguest declared its independence from the corporation after Colonel Kurt Hansen claimed a large portion of Pacifica for himself. In the 2050s, investors funded the Pacifica district of Night City to become a wealthy tourist destination. Militech was one of the biggest investors. This area of Eastern Pacifica used to be called Serrani Sands. In the following years, Pacifica's old buildings were demolished to give way to the new ones that were going to make this area one of the most attractive areas in Night City. In 2058, a large explosion on a construction site in Serrani Sands halted the process in the surrounding areas. Investigations were issued, but the cause was never determined. The truth was that in the 2020s, Militech had built an extensive network of laboratories and bunkers hidden beneath Pacifica's infrastructure, only to be abandoned at some point prior to the Fourth Corporate War. Rumors said that the explosion had been caused after accidentally uncovering part of Sinoshore's project. Due to this, Night City Council decided to wall off Serrani Sands, giving the excuse of a gas leak, and Militech constructed a large wall around the district. Construction resumed, and for a time, the new measures were enough to bring investors back. Many of the new projects were planned to be showcased at the founding of a future innovation expo, including models of the Eventide Resort and Spa, the Heavy Hearts Club, and a never-built Militech headquarters based in Night City. This Militech headquarters was an attempt from Militech to combat the heavy influence that Arasaka has in Night City. Seen my fill of gonk magnet ventures like this? Huh. In a past life? What was it? Real estate? Entertainment? Arasaka, actually. Research and development, broadly speaking. Specializing in data acquisition. Quaint name for corporate espionage. Quaint indeed. No need to delay. Night City, 2058. Savvy investors seeking to profit from booming tourism set their sights on the slum south of Haywood, hoping to turn filth into fortune. After a slew of generous donations to the city council, they're awarded exclusive construction permits. Their vision, 
a world-class luxury resort called Pacifica. The paradise quickly takes shape, built on the backs of an army of underpaid laborers. Amid development, the unification war between the NUSA and the free states reaches California. As confidence collapses, investors pull their funds and abandon the project. In 2070, with the NUSA poised to invade, an elite unit of Militech soldiers led by veteran Colonel Kurt Hansen is tasked with securing a strategic position within Pacifica. Their orders prepare a pathway for an all-out offensive on Night City. But the green light is never given. The NUSA and Free State sign the Arvin Accord. Hansen and his men are ordered to stand down. The commander disobeys. Seven years have passed. Kurt is entrenched within Pacifica. His inner haven, Dogtown, is enclosed within fortified walls, a bastion for night citizens seeking to escape corporate governance, a hideaway for all those with questionable pasts. In the husk of Pacifica's stadium, a black market with international reach has sprouted. Business is booming. Hansen's power steadily grows as does the thickness of his wallet. Both Night City and the NUSA refuse to take an official stance on Pacifica's new warlord, opting instead to let sleeping dogs lie. But given recent reports of feverish activity within Dogtown's walls, it seems only a matter of time before the ticking time bomb finally explodes. The Unification War halted Pacifica's success in its tracks. It was during the war when Colonel Kurt Hansen asserted control of a portion of Pacifica. Although it was originally simply known as the Combat Zone, people started to refer to it as Dogtown due to Hansen and his bar guest militia. As a small side note here, in Northern English folklore, the bar guest or bar guest is a mythical monstrous black dog with large teeth and claws. This fact confused me so so much while I was trying to make my black dog mystery video. Anyways. Going back to the topic, in the DLC at first, Kurt Hansen looks like a powerful man, a man in control. But if you look deeper, just like so me, Colonel Kurt Hansen is a victim of phantom liberty. Despite ruling Dogtown, he's not exactly a free man. He can't just buy a house, start a family and live happily ever after. The way he maintains his power and his freedom is by walking a very tight line. He has to make sure that very many different people and organizations are satisfied with his services, otherwise he'd lose his freedom and his life. Hansen himself frames it like this. Ah, so me. Care to introduce your friends? It's not often I'm simply not familiar with guests attending my own party. And I never forget a face. Kurt Hansen. Name's V. Just V. Haven't seen so me in years. Trying to catch up. Oh, that's what this is. To me, reunions consist of picking up the broken, scattered shards of your heart. Or teeth. Always hurts. Well, I need to grab you, darling. I have a couple NC politicos here who are dying to meet you. And if we're to keep hungry rats from devouring Dogtown, we really do need to feed them the occasional scraps. I'm all yours, Kurt. In the game Cyberpunk 2077, your entry to Phantom Liberty is thanks to a hollow call from an elite netrunner known as Songbird. He tells you that you can save your life, and as you're the most desperate you've ever been, you say yes. What the? Oh, it's like someone shoved my head in a place. Hey, you're gonna be okay. Breathe deep. Count to ten. Recite a mantra. Whatever brings calm, helps you stabilize. Your nervous system took a big hit, broke down. Racing heart, cold sweat, it'll pass. 
Fuck you doing? This a trap? Exact opposite. It's a helping hand. Right. I know about the bomb ticking in your head. If I could disarm it now, I would in a heartbeat. You'll feel better any second now. V something stinks here. Think she's she's fucking with the relic. How in the All true, Johnny. But don't you fret. They're both safe. Nah, fuck both off. Both of us on the biochip protocol at once can trigger shocks for V. Like you just saw now. Gotta cut you off. What? For your safety for V safety. to meet him for now. He hears you fine, just can't talk back. I'm starting to put two and two together. You gotta be a net runner. Damn good one at that. Guilt is charged. Hopped on the relic's cognitive protocol to dial in. I see and hear what you do. Just now, I'm on board Space Force One, sitting right across from Rosalind Myers, President of the New United States of America. The president? Fuck. I... No, you're not joking. Dead serious, yes. The plane's been hacked. Trajectory set for Night City. They'll bring us down to Dogtown soon. Our comms are down, most likely jammed. The relic was my only option. Right now, you're our one contact on the ground. Entry into Dogtown is achieved by V by going through an abandoned structure while following Songbird's instructions. As you do this, Songbird tells you about a famous hack that she did when she was younger, a hack on Biotechnica. The longest time, no one has ever been able to confirm this hack itself, but I believe that I found out Songbird's Natron attack. Most likely it was the famous Natron attack that she kept using up until she was recruited by Reed to join the NUSA. This information is found inside Slider's Dan, on a small table on the far edge of the room. Before we get to that, however, we need to talk about Slider. You murder my people in cold blood. They made their choice when they opened up at us. <laughs> Fuck me. Solomon Reed. I would be lying if I said I have missed you. And you? You brought death to Mama Bridget. <laughs> Will that be your gift for me as well? Heard about me? Huh. How? Me, my temple. We are one. My eyes and ears are everywhere. This isn't a temple. It's a malicious demon mill. And you're no priest. You're a two-bit bandit and murderer. Murderer? Ha! It takes one to know one. So, what will it be? Will you put me down like you did that bitch, Bridget? Here to make a deal. Nothing more. A deal? Let me guess. An empty promise and a bullet to the brain when you decide I am of no use to you. That kind of deal. I knew poor souls who tried to strike a deal with Solomon Reed. Remember them, Agent Reed? If one party is backed into a corner, it is not negotiation, it is extortion. You say tomato, I say fucking deal with its lighter. Now, cut the shit and do us the courtesy of hearing us out. No love lost between the two of you, eh? Those who speak to Reed have a strange habit of vanishing or committing suicide. But since you are partners, you must know that by now. Speak your piece. Plane crash in Dogtown. Heard about it? Plane? <laughs> you mean the Space Force One? Everyone hear about that? Need your help locating someone who was on board. And I would surely oblige. Were I not blind, wheelchair bound, and 
do not give zero fucks about that or you. Come on, stop pretending like you got a choice. Donk, Dim, sir. What specifically do you want from me? Just like that? No haggling. I already know this score. The Langley men send a clear message. Soon after SF1 crashed, a runner was attacked while in the net. Attack severed our link. Need to locate her, stat. Ah. So you want one to investigate net traffic on the day of the crash? Got a malfunctioning relic in my skull. That's how she made contact. That help any? Hmm. Perhaps. So, Slider was a high-ranking voodoo boy who worked closely with Maman and Brigitte. They had different visions for the gang and that is what ultimately caused the split. Maman and Brigitte believed that the only way to secure their future was by poking the black hole and making a deal with rogue AIs. Wilkie Laguerre, or as he's more famously known, Slider, he, on the other hand, wanted to keep things on a small scale. Heists on corporations to get money and assassinations on the net was what excited them. As they could not see eye to eye, pun intended, Wilkie Laguerre had to leave. But the problem is, despite leaving Pacifica for Dogtown, the NUSA never allowed him to have liberty. The liberty he enjoyed in Dogtown was always just an illusion. Solomon Reed was active in Dogtown and so was Alex, both sleeper agents for the NUSA. They were still keeping an eye on him and when the situation called for it, Reed was there to put pressure on Slider to force him to do dangerous things which ultimately led to Wilkie Laguerre's death. As for Songbird, he is what I believe we learn about her Netrunner tag as a rising star within the Netrunner scene. As I mentioned before, this shard can be found inside Slider's Den, and it reads, The criminal underworld has many legends, but few are more mysterious than the legendary net jockeys. In recent years, no Netrun has gained more notoriety than Skylight, the rising star of the hacker underground. Skylight is allegedly responsible for at least a dozen cyber attacks on Net's best secured servers, stealing data from such megacorps as Petrocam, Zetatech, and Kiroshi. The latest attack on Biotechnica, resulting in theft and subsequent auctioning of the company's sensitive data, is also attributed to Skylight. Who is this rising star of cybercrime? All we know is their alias. Nobody knows their background, gender, or even whether it's a single person or some sort of Netrunner collective. One thing's certain, however, we'll be hearing about their daring attacks and risky break-ins in the future. How long can they keep this up though? As the saying goes, the light that burns twice as bright burns half as long, and they've been burning so very, very brightly. During the events of Phantom Liberty, we found out that Songbird is being held captive by the NUSA. She's being used as President Myers' personal weapon of mass destruction. Songbird decides that she's had enough of this lifestyle. She's had enough of betraying friends and living a life without meaningful relationships. She wants something different. She needs something different. She needs her liberty, her freedom. In an attempt to achieve this, she uses her net running skills to deviate the NUSA's Space Force 1 from its original flight path and make it crash land in Dogtown. She achieves this crash landing, but she knows that Myers has to survive. If Myers dies, the NUSA will never stop hunting her. She will never achieve her freedom. That's where V comes in. Songbird hires V to help Myers survive the madness in Dogtown as V is the new up-and-coming mercenary in Night City. Of all of the capable mercenaries, V is also the most desperate, so that doesn't hurt. Once the truth comes out that Songbird is being held by Kurt Hansen, the NUSA dispatches Reed to go and get her back. This is before anyone realizes what's actually happening and that Songbird actually wants out. Reed has a strange relationship with Songbird and at first, it's hard to determine whether Reed is lying to us, himself, or both. Haven't said a word the whole way. What's eating you? Dunno. I don't know, V.
wanna talk? You know, about what happened. We did good. Did the right thing. We'll get her help. But I can't... I can't help stop seeing the same scene. Like it's burned inside my dome. We're in a car, moving, leaving Brooklyn. She refuses to turn, look back. No tears, no sobbing, just a statement. Seems like you saved my life. She doesn't believe it. I can hear she doesn't believe it. Would she say the same now? I think you did. I think you saved her then. Hope we'll save her again now. We're in the same boat. Clock's ticking for both Song and me. Just hope the FIA's up to the task. Of course. Let's talk about it though. At some point during his life, Solomon Reed became an experienced and USA federal intelligence agent, having extreme loyalty and incredible sense of duty to his country. His sense of loyalty is on a level that we haven't seen in Night City before. He truly lives and dies by the oath he took when he first joined the NUSA's intelligence agency. Song Soo Mi caught the attention of the FIA and was shortly thereafter recruited. She became Reed's trainee and protege. When it comes to who's the biggest scumbag in the game, Reed is on the list for sure. He keeps going after Song Soo Mi even after she confirms that her plan was to get away from the NUSA all along. She's not trying to get away because she's so scared of Myers or because somehow she can't do the job. The main reason, at least as far as I could notice, was because every time she jacked in and went deep sea diving for rogue AIs beyond the black wall, she lost a piece of herself in the process. Songbird was not just losing memories, she was losing pieces of what made her a human being. She was slowly turning into a machine, and she knew this. Reed knew this as well, but he did nothing. Actually, he did worse than nothing. He tried capturing her anyways and sending her back to the NUSA. We also know that Reed will do almost anything as long as he can justify this by him just following orders or him just doing his duty for the NUSA. Remember the two guys who stumbled upon Myers when she was in Dogtown? These two guys? You negotiated with Hansen? What was that about? Not small misunderstanding. They machete his leg off. You motherfucker. <laughs> was a conflict of interest. Colonel Dipshit don't appreciate motivated entrepreneurs like myself. Now my question is, what can you offer us that's better? I see a US president you're talking to. Guarantee the White House can offer more than some hermit warlord. The White House? But we're already in Hansen's house. If we help each other, I'm prepared to pay double what Hansen would. Jacob. Hmm. And what's that supposed to look like exactly? There's enough space for four. Should be easy to stay out of each other's way. But if any uninvited guests arrive, we'll be counting on you to stand with us. This is your chance. There won't be another. Shit. But it might could be our last. You got a deal, Madam Prez. And... Want me a ray field. Jesus Christ. Uh huh. Any model in particular? She, my ass will fit them all the same. Tell me where you want it parked. Will do. So long as your bodyguard don't slit our throats come nighttime. Reed killed them both. Remember these twins? Reed killed them as well. 
all with the silly excuse of him just doing his job. Can't help feeling I uh, interrupted something when I walked up. Do not worry yourself about this. Oh, come, come. V is just being cordial. Miss Pavi, you weren't snooping just now, were you? Odd. Red. Still no sign from Reed, V. Got a sinking feeling about this. Place your bets, please. Now, while Reed is definitely a bad person, and a very confused person at that, President Myers is multiple levels above that. She uses Songbird like a weapon. President Myers knows full well that poking the black wall could result in a catastrophic event, but she doesn't care. She keeps doing it anyways. As long as she achieves an edge, she's willing to sacrifice anybody and everybody. This includes Reed, by the way, and for some reason, Reed just can't cut ties with her and the NUSA. And just like Reed, Myers takes zero accountability for the chaos and destruction that she causes. One of, if not the main individual in the Phantom Liberty DLC is Songbird. She's willing to do whatever it takes to survive and people around her know that. She's also very intelligent, so she knows that they know that too. To counter this, she lies. She lies a lot. She knows exactly what to say, when to say it and who to say it to. That's how she ends up in so many sticky situations. The idea that she can achieve her freedom after everything she's done is just an illusion. Phantom Liberty is a very real thing for Somi. Netwatch know about her, Militech knows about her too. So does Arasaka, the NUSA, Biotechnica and every other organization of significance in Night City. Whichever one she decides to go to for help will most likely try to get her to work for them instead. In the game, if we choose to betray Reed and take Songbird to the moon, Night Corp and Mr. Blue Eyes get her. Who knows what they're going to make her do for them. There's a scene at the airport where she confirms that she's made a deal with Mr. Blue Eyes. If you actually listen to the tone of voice, you can tell that she's almost given up on life. Take a look at you, Chrome. Is that even safe? Most of your sub-assemblies, I'm familiar. Could run auto-diagnostics, grant you access to your bios. Got a readout. I can overclock the compensators. Hope they can take it. It was gonna be different, all this. Smoother. But the goal's what counts, right? Not far off. One thing. Thing you forgot to tell me. Who got you this flight? Funny thing is, I don't know. Proxy showed up. A corpo every man for the ages. Expensive, understated suit, dark hair, blue eyes. He asked me questions. The kind only I know the answers to. Blackwall. That the issue? Mm, and other things. Rather not talk about it. Just don't judge me, okay? And listening to this and seeing this and knowing at the same time that Myers knows all of this but she just doesn't care, that puts her on a level that's way, way above Reed when it comes to being a scumbag. So in many ways, Songbird will never be free as long as she's alive. She knows this too. And that's one of the main reasons why she asks you to kill her if you betrayed her in the game. If you send her back to the NUSA, you can meet with Reed again at the basketball court where you guys first met each other. Reed will then tell you that most likely Songbird will return to active duty. This proves the point that she's too valuable to ever be set free as long as she's alive. For most of the characters introduced in the DLC, the only liberty they'll ever get to experience is Phantom Liberty. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.